Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the king of armor destruction, and I think we have the absolute upper tier of personal worn body armor protection that we are going to demo today, at least in theory. This is from our friends over at Adept. In full transparency, Jake sent us a pair of these plates to demo with no strings attached. Now, you are probably looking at the second camera, looking at the weight of this thing. These are the Colossus Heavy Ultra AP rated. They weigh nine pounds, four ounces, or 4.19 kilograms for those across the ponds. They are approximately 1.488 inches thick, or again, for those across the pond, 37.8 millimeters. They, all, they are multi-curve. You can see those sexy curves right there. You also note that there is no label on the back, so these are considered a prototype, and Jake was nice enough to ask us to perform this test on these panels. If you're wondering what threat we're gonna shoot at these very thick and heavy boys, we're gonna shoot our 50 BMG, and not just M33 ball, but M2 armor piercing. And what's the distance gonna be? 25 yards. That's gonna be insane. Typically in the past, when I've done any demos of 50 BMG, I've gone out to approximately 200 yards. Jake from Adept wants to know what this plate will do at full velocity spec as close as I can get. I figured 25 yards would be a safe bet. We have our Barrett M107A one day that has a 29 inch barrel. Now currently for personal worn body armor, there is no NIJ standard that covers 50 BMG because this is mainly considered an anti-material rifle. I do believe the Russians under their GOST standard have something that says that they have some insanely thick plate that will stop three rounds of their B32 in their 50 BMG equivalent at I think 150 meters with survivable back face. Obviously, I've never seen any video footage or proof of that, so always take that with a grain of salt. Now, here comes the long-winded spiel. If you're a longtime follower, all this will be very common to you. We're gonna shoot at 25 yards, as mentioned. Normally for NIJ armor, it's 45 feet, but we're gonna go back a little bit to 25 yards for a little bit of safety margin. We also shoot at zero degrees because that represents a worst case scenario. Any oblique angles only increase the amount of material that the bullet has to penetrate through. We also use a chronograph, a Pro Chrono Pal Digital DLX, because we need to know the velocity of this projectile as it leaves the muscle, muzzle, and with as close as it being, we're not gonna lose a whole bunch of velocity. If this actually penetrates on the first round, I have the second plate and a lower charge round to simulate some additional range. We also use a giant clay briefcase filled with Roma Plastilina number no. one clay that acts as our compressible media to put the body armor up against. Now, again, in the past when I've tested 50 BMG, we have stopped it at 200 yards, the M33 ball, with a standard level four plate, but the back face is like this big, and then it's a huge, huge indent in the clay. I can't keep the clay up to the official NIJ temperature out here, so we're just gonna see a representation of the back face, and ideally, this test, if it goes well, that back, back face should be under 44 millimeters. This plate does employ a ceramic strike face that does extend edge to edge. However, Adept has asked me not to do a drop test that we normally do under our NIJ preconditioning test. That's normally where I have a little rig and I drop the plate on its face two times. We are, have not done that with this particular plate. Finally, we have a giant spreadsheet that we put here at the beginning that we kind of foreshadow all the threats that we're gonna shoot at this plate. We fill out the velocities and penetrations and we do a tear down at the end because we're always interested to see what kind of materials make up these panels. I also want to remind everyone that I am not an NIJ lab, so if you see me stop a threat or a threat penetrates over here, you should always defer to the manufacturer to produce accredited lab results for definite answers. On the flip side, if you're the manufacturer and you see me do something insane like this, you should send it off to an accredited lab and have that threat tested. All right, we're set up and ready to take our first and hopefully maybe only shot at this. We've got our M2 AP that has a very large and hardened steel penetrating tip, or core, I should say. It's the exact same core that the API and the APIT uses. We've got the Barrett M107A1, like I said, 29 inch barrel. We have a Rex Silentium MG50 coming for this at some point. Got the adjustable bag rider on here 
for dialing in some precise shots. This is a favorite part of everyone's. Yeah. So this should be center of mass. Not sure on the velocity, you guys can read it, 27 something. Our plate is knocked down. Let's go see what we did. Hey, I actually hit where I wanted, although the velocity on those loads is a little down there. I was hoping for 2,800 feet per second. I think that might have been some surplus that I checked before, before grabbing the Denver bullets. Maybe we take a second shot on this plate. I'm not sure. Place those bets in the comments below. We did knock this entire structure over. No freaking way. No pass through, folks. There's all of our ceramic, but no pass through. Now I'd be afraid to take a second shot on this panel, but I mean, we have it. I mean, it'd be good data to know, maybe we take the reduced velocity shot. Now our back face is pretty hefty, although it's not as localized as what you see. As mentioned, the clay is cold. So you're looking, I need to find a better way to have something to come across this to measure. We're looking right around a, because that was right there, right around a 40 millimeter impression in the clay. Now, that impression is spread out more. Look at how large that is. And you saw that it knocked the briefcase over. We've never knocked one over when we're testing other small arms munitions, but interesting. I think for the name of science, we take the reduced velocity shot on this and hope for the best. We're gonna take this shot down in the corner. And you know, at this point, everything's gonna be a gamble. It sounds like there's quite a bit of that strike face left, but I'm not sure. If the, if the clay briefcase down there doesn't fall over, we know that it probably went through. I think it went through. Our second shot was down here. I felt after torquing the plate that the most solid part of the plate was down here. There's some cracking that I hear up here. So we're about mm, three, four inches away we were two inches from the edge so i'd say we're pretty good but uh oh raggy we have a penetration you can see that it was actually trying to go that way so it did slow it down quite a bit but that was just too much for it i think at this point i think we should be done all right now it's time for the tear down let's see what makes this panel so special here is our back of our Ultra AP. As you can see, the only confirmed penetration is that second reduced velocity shot. We have a high density foam here on the back. I measured that right around 130 thousandths thick. Very interesting foam. Seemed to hold up pretty well. I like that they're using whatever adhesive this is because it was very hard to get off. Here is our backer. 680 thousandths it is pressed very very well normally if it wasn't pressed 
it would be able to be thumbed through like a book. And considering how much energy 50 BMG has, normally on some of our other plates, when you start stopping threats in 30 caliber, you delaminate these layers. So ADEPT is pressing our ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, whatever kind it is, very, very well. You can see the dimple there from the stopped shot and then our penetration there. We do have some foam on the outside, which I always think is a good thing. It helps against any edge strikes. Now our strike face. I would assume that this is the same material that they use in the Colossus as well, but it's a lot thicker, 601 thousandths thick. Normally for level four, most strike faces are in the 420 thousandths to one half of an inch. But you can see the epicenter, how it just blew all that away there. And then, but how much more of it still remains? Fairly impressive. And then the front side, there is no drop face foam on these, but there is a layer of ultra high molecular weight polyethylene, which is used as a laminating layer. And you can see that that strike face does extend all the way edge to edge. Honestly, I have no idea if ADEPT will ever produce these plates and what they would cost and who would even need them, but I assume he had me do this test as a, hey, look at the capabilities we have with our material technology. Downright damn impressive. I think this movie line would be appropriate here. Ho, 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 now I have a 50 BMG rated plate. Although it is nine pounds and it almost one and a half inches thick, I'm not sure what plate care would fit it. Adept is simply just turning heads the amount of R&D and engineering that they put into a plate to be able to stop M2AP in 50 BMG at 30 yards is simply amazing. Now, I didn't realize that the load that I picked out of the box was a little on the shy side. I think I was using some surplus before when I was taking a couple pre-shots to get around 2,800 feet per second. So we were a little shy of our velocity spec, but again, none of this is anywhere rated in the NIJ or any current body armor standards that I'm aware of. So it's simply for science and a little bit of fun. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here because I'm getting rained on pretty bad. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who help make these possible because there's a lot that goes into these videos. Number one is my Patreon and Subscribestar fans. I have a link tree in the description below. Various different ways to contact me or support me. I don't think Adept is going to produce these plates. It's just more of a show of their R&D and engineering capability. But if you're looking at picking up their Colossus or the Thunder plate that I tested before, I have a discount code. It saves you, I think, 5% off your order and it kicks back, I think, 5% to me. And what I do with that 5% is I buy different reloading components or ammunition or even clay and straps to put right back in the channel. Sometimes I buy some new video equipment so any of that is greatly appreciated. Number two is Jake over at Adept Armor, who in full transparency provided us with those plates to destroy with no strings attached. I know they have some of their other products that you all want me to test. Leave me a comment below and we'll pass those on to Adept and see if we can get some to test later in the year. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.